On behalf of the family, Joanne and Gerald, John and Pat and Bernie and Linda and their families, we're glad to be able to be together here today to, in a time of worship, celebrate God's gift to us that was their mom and Oma, Hermine Corton. And uh, we're glad you're able to be here. Bernie just had surgery recently, so we're glad on how fast you ran down that aisle. And uh, John also going through treatment, so we're, the Lord has blessed us with this opportunity. Everything worked out to be able to gather together. And it's a time to uh, celebrate God's goodness, but also a time to remember and grieve. And the reality of uh, uh, Hermine being um, at the age of 93 and wanting to go home to the Lord and the family kind of knowing the time was coming, still it is a loss. Uh, your mom's gone and your oma's gone. And uh, so we, we acknowledge that, and we want to remember that. And so together as family and friends and as brothers and sisters in Christ today, uh, in the time you've already been doing that, um, to be sure to share and encourage with each other with words of remembrance and uh, memories that are special to you. Uh, we, in, we impact each other in very specific ways. Uh, we all relate to each other in sort of different ways based on either family relationship, friendships, or acquaintances, or being neighbors, or having worked for each other, and these sorts of things. And these are parts of the picture that God weaves us into, into the communities we're a part of. So be sure to share that. Also, in reminding you to uh, please sign the guest book if you haven't. It's by the doorway there on the way out. Um, and that also, uh, immediately after the service, the family will be leaving um, and you're welcome to join them uh, at the gravesite. We'll be going over there and doing the burial and then coming back here for a light lunch together, and you're all welcome to be a part of that. Let's begin with uh, one of the songs that was uh, a very much a favorite of Hermine as well, a favorite of the Christian church throughout the ages. It's, a, it's an old song that is part of um, our repertoire still here in Bethany as well. Psalter Hymnal 483. We're going to sing out of the Psalter Hymnal book. Uh, 483, How Great Thou Art, will sing all the verses. <laughs>
please join your hearts together in a prayer for God's comforting presence. Let us pray. Lord God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear us than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask. You know our ignorance even in asking. But we come in the name of Jesus Christ, asking for your gracious presence in comfort. Show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity in Christ. Speak to us once more of your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Holy Spirit, surround us and draw near to us in whatever way is needful by each and every one of us that we may sense your grace, your love, just as Hermine also received that daily from you. Uphold us in this time, and may our songs, our prayers, and our words be a blessing to one another and bring honor and glory to you, our Savior God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of Hermine's favorite songs is the song, The River. The words are printed in the bulletin, so let's sing that together. promise of God's love, his compassion unearned by us, is spread throughout the Bible. I'm going to read a number of passages that reflect on that, uh, the reality of who we are, the reality of what God has done for us and who he is to us even today. First from Psalm 130, 
begins with, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem his people from all their sins. And then moving over to the prophecy of Isaiah, where God speaking to his people in a desperate time of need and fears, says these words. He says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. God has been faithful to his promises. He has kept all that he has said he would do. He fulfilled that in the coming of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus ministered on this earth before he died for our sins, he spoke about the trust that we have in God given by the Holy Spirit. In John 14, he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you, may, that you also may be where I am. Now you know the way to the place where I am going. And one of his disciples, Thomas, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the Apostle Peter, reflecting on that gracious gift of entrance into the Father's love, into relationship with God through Jesus Christ, says these words in 1 Peter 1. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. And in Matthew chapter 11, we find an invitation from Jesus to each and every one of us. He says, At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, 
and my burden is light. This is who Jesus is for each and every one of us, receiving him by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. He becomes the one who walks with us in our lives. Let's sing together Psalter hymnal number 579, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, number 579, and we'll sing all the verses. come to spend a few moments with God's word, let's ask the Lord's blessing of his spirit on the reading and proclamation of his word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your friendship. And Jesus, you promised before you left your disciples that you would send the Father, the Comforter. You would send the Holy Spirit who was poured out, is present with us now. And so, Lord, inhabit the proclamation of your word May it speak comfort into our lives. May it encourage us to seek you out and lean on you in this time of remembering, this time of grieving and of celebrating, but also, Lord, in all the times of our lives that we may recognize how faithful you are and that because of the forgiveness of our sins, we can enjoy your love. Invite us into that this, this morning, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The passage for the message this morning is Psalm 61. If you want to follow along, it's on page 501 in the Bench Bibles. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. 
I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then will I ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Joanne and Gerald and John and Pat, Bernie and Linda, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, siblings, in-laws, friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, along with Hermine Corton, who stands now in the glorious presence of our Heavenly Father. So we do give thanks to God today for the gift that Hermine was to all of us in many different ways. That's part of why we're here. Another part is to support each other in our grieving, to remember, to share together her impact on our lives. But we're also here this morning to listen to the Spirit who is the Lord, to speak to us from his living word of life here in the Psalms, speaking into whatever's going on in your life into the joys, the sorrows, into the thankfulness, into the grieving of this time and place. So may the Holy Spirit reveal God's word to our hearts and lives. Psalm 61 is like a number of psalms that seem to become more real the older we get. Verse 1 says, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. Hermine grew up in a time and in a society that was fairly friendly to the Christian faith. To my knowledge, she grew up in a Christian home, was taught to read the Bible, probably memorized many passages, and also probably in song, memorizing a lot of the psalms by the song that was attached to them in church. And she continued to love to sing in church choirs and for many years, singing the praises of her God. So she was also, I'm pretty sure, taught to pray from a young age. And so these words of verse 1 were part of her life from an early age. And really, as we follow the Lord, if we've been following him most of our life, it's, it's it's the cry that is at the start of our faith. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. In fact, we know from the Bible that if we come to faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as we do that, we come to realize that God actually was before that even happened. That God has known and chosen us, as the Bible says, before the foundations of the world. And so as we turn to God in our lives, we know that he is not someone whose attention we're trying to get, but someone who has been attending to us. So perhaps the cry, which, this cry, which is really the reality of what praying is, You could hear that even in an infant crying out for help and love. It comes, our God comes before us. Such is our dependence on God for our very life. Hermine was baptized as an infant, at which time God publicly laid his claim, his call on her life. So even before she was aware of him, he offered to her already the forgiveness of sins that comes as a gift in Jesus Christ. So her crying And her learning to pray became part of her life. She grew up in the Christian faith, and she married a Christian man, Hendrik Corton. And the two of them journeyed forward together in life with the Lord in the center of their lives. Joanne was born, and shortly after, I don't know if it's because of your birth, they fled. No, they immigrated to Canada. Now, in post-World War II area, many people traveled after World War II in in the Netherlands to Canada. They often went on uh, older ships, sometimes converted troop ships. The Cortons came on the Volendam, and then by train, I would figure, right? Uh, You were kind of young. Yeah, by train. You don't remember that, no. Um, And arrived to finally the area they began to live in. And I think that coming that whole distance, because, of course, it's not by plane, it's by slower ship. Actually, if you would look up Volendam today, you'll find a cruise ship that you can book today, which looks very different. Um, but you would travel here, and I think by arriving in this area, it may have seemed like to Hermine and Hendrik that they were arriving at the ends of the earth, coming to a place that was strange. For Hermine, having left all her large family behind at first, this was difficult, even as it was exciting in many ways. But new language... New customs, new culture, everything unfamiliar. Verse 2, from the ends of the earth I call out to you. She might have felt that. Lord, I'm way over here now. 
And as my heart grows faint of the weight of all the changes, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Place me back on your foundation. Like the psalmist, we too, when we're honest about ourselves, recognize that really we, we are not masters of our lives, masters of our fate. We do not hold our future in our hands. We cannot hold back the years that bring us toward the end of our life. We need to look to someone beyond us. And the older we get, the more this becomes real to us. And the more we are perhaps then maybe more willing to turn more openly to the one who does hold us in his eternal hands, our Savior God. Hermine, I'm pretty sure, knew, as the Heidelberg Catechism tells us, that her only comfort in life and in death, really foundationally so, is her faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus' death in our place under God's wrath against all of our sins, Hermine's included, we can find in God a rescue in this life and on into eternity. And so verse 3, For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Faith in Jesus, given freely by the Holy Spirit, this faith recognizes that in all the smooth places of successes, good health, family, friends, and in all the dark valleys of worry, fears, loss, grief, loneliness, God remains the same, the God of forgiveness and love through Jesus. And as the years go by and our strength begins to fade, and we can count more days behind us than in front of us in this life, our longings also start to change as well. Think about it. When we're young, we long to grow up, right? Can't wait till I'm older. We long to find our in independence. We want to walk on our own two feet. When we're starting out as adults, we long for good relationships, good jobs, careers, a good future. But as life plods on and, and maybe these goals arrive and they kind of float past us, the real purpose of our life, something more foundational, becomes ever clearer. And this is the work of God's grace. And verse 4 says, I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. I think with age comes a growing tiredness with the struggles of life. An older friend of mine once said, growing old is not for sissies. It's a difficult journey. When we never stop worrying about our kids or grandkids, about friends and family, about what's going on in the world, but, but we grow weary, perhaps, of trying to be there for them as we come to realize we really cannot be the shelter and refuge for them that we all need. And so our cry, our prayer, more and more turns to the Lord God. For only God, who is eternal, immortal, all-powerful, only He can in fact rescue us even from death that awaits us all. And in doing so, God grants us the gift of a future not of our making. Verse 5 says, For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Now this future, this heritage, is, is not really what we sometimes think about when we think of heritage or, or a legacy. Heritage for us is usually what's, what's behind coming to us, what's, what's in the past. And in the psalm here, the heritage is sort of in front of us. The psalmist speaks of vows he made, vows responding to God's presence in his life. Hermine, like a lot of us here, made vows. She confirmed what was sealed to her in her baptism when she professed her faith in the body of believers. She made another vow when she married in the Lord with Hendrik. Promises made in the presence of God and his people. And God heard these promises and perhaps others that she made in her life that weren't as public. Now, even though the Bible elsewhere does speak of children as a heritage from the Lord, as a good gift, here it is speaking of the gift of life eternal that God grants all who are in his son, Christ Jesus. Hermine was one of those who feared the name of the Lord. Now, this is not fear as in being afraid, but fear in the Old Testament sense of honoring and holding in high esteem. In fact, the highest esteem of all. You see, the reason that a believer cries out to the Lord God in prayer in all kinds of situations and circumstances is because they know God is trustworthy. They know He is perfectly in, a person of integrity. They know that He is the only God who hears prayer, who listens to our cry even as our hearts grow faint. I mean, life for Hermione was not always easy. 
maybe seldom easy. A large family with meager means to grow up in, immigrating and starting in a foreign land as outsiders. I mean, just think of how our society, even today still, struggles to be welcoming to newcomers. Working hard and long to make ends meet, to provide, striving to raise her own kids as best she can, as she, best she can to know and love the same God she depended on, the same God she cried out to. As we go through life, and especially as old age and frailty take hold, our dependence on the Lord increases and deepens. Hermine prayed much in her last years. In one of the conversations I had with her, she, she said, oh, prayer is all that I can do anymore. But prayer is not just a small thing. But she also recognized that her prayers were becoming perhaps a little more honest. She also questioned how it is that such a great God could love us. Because as we get older, we also become more aware of, honestly, what our lives have been. Things we can't change and go back and do again. And she questioned, how could God love us if we've lived such imperfect, downright difficult lives because of our sin? And when she questioned that, we always went back, and she did too, because of Jesus, not because of us. You see, her questions were still for God. They were still the crying out, the prayer of a believer. She prayed to her father. And in her last few months, if not her last year or so, her question to God was more and more, why am I still here, Lord? She longed to dwell in her father's tent. She longed to dwell in God's tent, in his house forever, to rest under the shelter of his love and acceptance that she knew she had in Jesus. Verse 6 and 7 speak of the one in whom our hope lies. The psalmist writes, Increase the days of the king's life, his years, for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Now, King David of ancient Israel, who wrote this psalm, is not speaking about himself. He knew he was mortal. He wasn't going to be alive for generations and forever. No, being moved by the Holy Spirit, he wrote of the one to come who would reign forever. And that one is Jesus Christ, who after he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven and is ruling over everything. Looking to this Jesus for our heritage, our hope, our future, even as our own lives decline and struggle, this is the source of verse 8. Then will I ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. We desire to follow God in his ways, to live good and upright lives, to be able to celebrate his goodness. But that is always an ongoing struggle in this life because of our sinful nature, the fallenness of this world that resists God, and the lies of Satan himself who tries to distract us from God's love in Christ. But in Christ Jesus, we have the heritage held firm. We will be made new again, whole and full of God's love, so that we will be able to live fully for him. And our praises to God, while well, they will roll off our tongues with fullness of gratitude for the gift of eternal life with God. Hermine is already there. We continue here. So family and friends, as you journey forward in your lives, remembering and missing mom and Oma, Hermine, do what she did. Call out to God for the gift of his gracious heritage. Seek the Lord while you have time to do so. For in the troubles we all face, God is faithful. He proved that in sending Jesus to make us pure and holy in his sight. You don't have to earn this with God. You have to receive it as a gift. And cling to it. Made of crying out in the prayer to God who listens and, hear, and hears you, become a rhythm in your life. Then you can walk the difficult valleys and not be overcome by them. When Hermine finally breathed her last breath on this earth, it was not a defeat for her. It was a victory as God kept his promise to her and welcomed her home. Her faith became sight. Her cry was finally completely answered. Her longing fulfilled. She entered the tent of the Lord forever, taking refuge and shelter forever, and will continue so into the coming of the new heaven and the new earth that will no longer have aging and dying as we know it, for sin will be no more. So seek the Lord today. 
Give thanks to him for the gift of one another, of your time today to share, to love, to care, and to pray for one another. For God does hear your cry. He listens to your prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in a prayer. Eternal God, we, we bless your name for the great company of all those who have kept the faith and finished their race and now who rest from their labor. We praise you for all those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you now. And especially we thank you for Hermine, whom you have received into your presence. Help us, Holy Spirit, to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years, bringing us to the la at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. On behalf of the family, I would like, they would like to thank you for your care and your presence with Hermine over the years, for your friendships, for the support and visits and cards, for the prayers, the love you showed to their mom and to their Oma. It's usually when we're saying goodbye that we recognize how deeply important that is for each and every one of us. So they just want to bless you and thank you for how you've walked alongside them and continue to do so now. And also, you're welcome uh, to accompany the family to the burial and then return here for a light lunch and spend some time together with the family. Um, or you can just remain here until they return as well. I invite you to rise together for the words of blessing. Let's stand, if you're able. Lift your hearts before the Lord and receive these words from Philippians 4. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may the love of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and remain with you always. God's people say, Amen. Let's sing together in closing number 556, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 556. Amen.